It's a new toy. Edmond Public Schools says they're not playing around with. Bringing these to school is prohibited. They're called splatterball guns, similar to paintball guns, but they shoot water bead ammunition. In this letter sent out Thursday, Santa Fe High School's principal Jason Hayes reminding students and parents of the EPS dangerous weapons policy, saying, quote, there is no place at school for any device capable of discharging a projectile that could frighten or injure a student or staff member. These can look very authentic. And you can imagine the fear and the panic that that can create on a campus. The district also warning that these fake guns can lead to real consequences. Already within the last three weeks, they've fired off five suspensions. And we know they're not thinking, you know, they're having fun with these off campus. And there's an appropriate place for paintball guns, splat guns, that type of thing. But it's not on campus. This is therapeutic for me. I just want to do it. If one person sees it and is moved, great. I work at the Oklahoma City VA Hospital. I'm a nurse there. Everything that's going on, I just felt like this was a good time to say things. And I wanted to express myself in the only way that I know how, you know, and that's through my art. I feel like I speak the loudest through my art. Honestly, I think my biggest goal was just to make someone stop looking and feel something different than what everybody had been feeling, you know. Seeing something beautiful, that makes me feel good. When I think about George Floyd, I think about my cousins. I think about my brothers. I think about my friends, and I wanted to capture that. I think that's why I wanted to do the different, the different variations of black. Black is not just one shade, it's many shades. And then I wanted to even capture that in his hoodie. I wanted all colors um, to come together. We do need to raise awareness. We do need to raise the discussion that black lives, there has been an issue there, and it's an uncomfortable topic. It is, but it's 2020, and it's about time we start having those conversations. I think that this was a huge pivotal point um, for America itself, um, but I think my whole goal with this was just to reach someone in a different way. We've had several rounds of, of heavy rainfall and thunderstorms moving across the area. Oklahomans are feeling the impact from severe storms Saturday night and early Tuesday morning. The water just came out of nowhere. Just like one minute, it's like a little puddle. Then all of a sudden, this water started rushing right here at this corner. It's like it was just flooded out. My whole car on the inside had water in it. In a four day span, it's kind of this broad swath running through from northwest Oklahoma into central Oklahoma. Meteorologist Oklahoma. Phil Ware at the Norman National Weather Service says parts of the metro and southern Oklahoma saw five to seven inches of rainfall. We've seen reports of cars stranded, um, people stranded in areas that, you know, low water crossings blocking the roadways. Something the Sooner State usually sees in June. To kind of get the setup where we get thunderstorms that develop, you know, way up in the high plains and then move into our area um, in the overnight hours, um, which is what we've been seeing. But where admits this still happening a month later is a surprise. What does make it a little unusual is that it's so late into the season, kind of more into the middle of the summer when we're normally starting to dry out. As the summer continues, Ware says there are ways Oklahomans can stay weather aware. Having ways to receive warnings, paying attention to, you know, uh, road closures, um, if there's flooding, um, and, you know, just maybe being aware that because we've seen so much rainfall already, it's not going to take a lot to lead to future flooding. It's the pride of Oklahoma. For over a century, this band has been promoting Sooner spirit with every footstep. We're on the forefront of, of marching bands uh, in America and definitely in the state. For the pride, practicing in the Oklahoma heat is tough and sweaty. First up, a good stretch to loosen up, then marching and marching what? and more marching without music to learn the steps because every week there's a new show to perform to thousands of football fans. There's even breathing exercises as some of these instruments demand all the air these members can muster. Gabriel Schaefer is the trumpet section leader and a four-year Pride member. He says the work is key to the Pride's tradition. We represent Oklahoma on a national level 
more times than I think any other college in the state. These students also represent 70 different majors on the OU campus. 75% are majoring in a field outside of music. Their average GPA, a sweet sounding 3.0. It's really great. It's like having a big family that I can rely on if I ever need help with school or anything else. And all of them, from the flag corps and the flutes, to the tubas and the trombones have one thing in common. We love football more than anybody else in that stadium and we are so excited to be out there and support our team. As drum major, it's Julie Seibert's job to take the pride to the next level. I try to get out on the field as much as I can to really make sure that I'm inspiring people around me, motivating people, and giving some feedback where I can. Because keeping people in their seats during halftime is more than a goal, it's a privilege the pride takes with pride. The way we perform and, and hold ourselves, that should be worth staying for. And if we're not picking selections that, that encourage people to want to wanna listen and stay for us, then, then we need to do something better. To me, art is such joy, such a delight. Joy Richardson was given the perfect name. When you have a name like Joy, what are you gonna get her to do something sad? <laughs> Her paintings are abstract. The colors she uses are bright and bold. I just love color and it makes me happy. Does that look like anything to you? Richardson paints all year for this week, setting aside certain paintings she knows will catch someone's eye. Initially, she didn't make it into the festival, but she kept trying until she did get in 10 years ago. It was so, so exciting. Well, I tried for three years, and, and then when I finally got in, I was thrilled. Ooh, that's gooky. Her process is messy, which doesn't bother her one bit. She paints with acrylics. The fact that they dry quickly, because I'm a very, very impatient woman. If it takes too long, I don't know what's going on. I like to overpaint, or I'll look at something and go, oh, that's really bad, and slap something else on it. and. Uh, I love that acrylics let me do that. Some of her works have a Native American theme, which fascinates her. All of a sudden, out popped a person. She says there's no political message. What I loved is nobody could tell me it was wrong. It could be ugly, but it's not wrong. It's just what I felt. She just wants her art to make people feel good. Do you think you'll ever get bored with painting? No, 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 no. And what's so wonderful, it's not age sensitive. You can paint as long as you're able. And, you know, as long as there are colors, I'm, I can do that.